Good morning or good afternoon or whenever you're watching this and welcome to our worship service for the week of March 29th. We're glad you could join us wherever you are. Uh, we are glad to be here in God's house to, to worship but uh, and we're glad that you can worship along with us wherever you are. Uh, and remember that though there may not be many of us gathered in any one place, that Jesus is there with us. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm chapter 36, verses 5 through 10. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your justice like the great deep. O Lord, you preserve both man and beast. How priceless is your unfailing love. Both high and low among men find refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Continue your love to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can gather to worship you wherever we might be, Lord. We pray especially for those who are working in the possible dangerous situations that they might face. We pray for those who are unable to work, Lord, for uh, one reason or the other through this crazy time, where we ask that you'll be with them and provide for all their needs. Lord, we ask that you will be with those who are sick, those who are alone, for those that are searching, Lord. We ask that you fill all of us with your Holy Spirit and your light, that we may be a light in this dark time. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're going to have a hymn, Seek Ye First, and we would be, uh, it would be great if you would sing along at home. so good to be with you today. I want to say these are strange times we're in for me to stand here in our beautiful sanctuary and look out at maybe two or three people, but to know that the family of God is gathering together uh, before computer screens or on smartphones and to know that we're praying for one another one a day, I do truly feel that the Spirit is in this place as we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And as we come uh, to knock on that door as we do it in prayer, uh, let me begin uh, with a word of thanksgiving to the church because uh, this week with all the telephone calls and the support for what we're doing and trying to do as First Baptist Church of Katanning, I truly appreciate uh, the love that God sheds through his church to each and every one of us, and especially as your pastor, 
uh, the love my family and I have felt through this with the concern, calls of concerns, the cards of encouragement, and of course the Facebook post. So as we pray today, let's bow our heads before God and pray, Gracious Father, we thank you for this day and for the opportunity to be here together in worship. During this time, may we be able to put aside the concerns of our daily lives, concerns that are new to us in many ways of speaking and therefore have the ability to frighten us. Help us to put our complete trust in you and allow us simply to be present here together for your spirit to bring us your word in the spirit of that psalm that says, be still and know that I am God. Father, that is our prayer today. Lord God, there are many among us today with special needs in their own lives and needs Uh, for a spiritual, special touch and reassurance from you right now. There are numerous physical problems, and we don't understand why these things come into our lives, and we're tempted to question you at times like this, and our faith is tested. And sometimes, Lord, it feels like it's tested to the limits. So we pray, dear Lord, we cry out for mercy. We pray for protection And Lord, as we talk of this virus and the what might be, Father God, we particularly pray for the elderly, those who are weakened by disease, and those facing in in their hardships financial difficulties. I pray for those who await surgeries, Father God, and procedures and, and diagnosis that have been put on hold, Father God, or rescheduled for a later date. Father, we give time to you. And we pray that all happens according to your will, and we know it does because you say it will. Father God, we are mourning today with those who mourn, and we ask you, the Comforter, Holy Spirit, anoint them with the the source of hope that is you, the the present hope of eternity that your present brings to us in our times of need. Father God, I want to pray for our children. I want to pray for students and their teachers who are facing new challenges together and as families work together teaching and learning from one another and through circumstances that we have not faced before. Let us find that the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, forbearance, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control is ours to enjoy. Father, we pray for our leaders of of the nation and the many important and critical situations they're facing. Give to our president wisdom and the cabinet members and the men and women of Congress as well, dear Lord. May we be united in in the decisions that are made because we're praying that those decisions are your decisions. And Father God, in this time of national struggle within, Father, I pray for our military personnel stationed around the world, including here in the United States, and especially those in combat. We know that they face dangers and the possibility of death day in and day out. And Father God, as we ourselves are facing new challenges each and every day, Father God, give us uh, the faith, give us the courage Uh, Give us the wherewithal, Father God, uh, to fight this spiritual battle we're in. Father, I just pray that you bless our families. And dear Lord, uh, not being able to be together as the church has has been difficult. And until we see fit according to your will to be back together again, dear Lord, we do worship together. We pray for one another. And Father God, I want to thank you for for. Facebook. I want to thank you for telephones. I want to thank you for emails, dear Lord, and this source uh, of communication that we have, Father God, that, that brings us together in very special ways. And for today, dear Lord, I, I pray that your word comes to us in a significant manner to change our lives, dear Lord. Again, as we face things we've never faced before in these times we're in, Uh, We do give it to you, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, asking you to to pour out upon us the peace that goes beyond understanding. Dear Lord, I I pray for those today who are are reaching their neighbors with the love of Jesus Christ. So many people in need, dear Lord. 
And though we seem to be unable to touch one another, Father God, we are reaching out in ways we've never done before. And sometimes it's not very far, Father God, because people have come closer to us who used to seem far from us. So I pray for Katanning today, dear Lord. And as news comes of more cases of this coronavirus, Father God, we pray for those families who are dealing with it. We pray for those who are, are concerned about being in the presence of those who have, been, have contract, contracted the disease, dear Lord. And Father God, as it seems to get in close, getting closer to home, even as we pray, Father God, I would ask in Jesus' name that you, you stay the disease. Father, stop it, I pray, in Jesus' holy and precious name. And once more, dear Lord, I just want to thank you and praise you for this chance to sing together, to pray together, to learn together, Father God, and to love one another in the glorious, precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Good day. It's great to be here. We're going to be in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6 today. So if you don't have a Bible, uh, stop, uh, stop the recording and uh, go grab yourself one. Uh, we're going to be in Matthew, chapter 6, reading verses 24 through 34. You know, I found uh, as we're going through these couple of weeks we've been through, uh, that I'm drawn to the more familiar passages of Scripture, and I think familiar is very comforting in times like this. And so uh, I, I often come to uh, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, as we are this morning, and uh, I, I really feel like I'm there. I, I feel like I'm listening to Jesus and His words, and it's always a, a word of encouragement. Uh, the message title this morning is, Consider This, Will He Not Much More You? Consider this. Again, Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 24, Jesus said, No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet their heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his, right, and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. May the Lord bless the beautiful word of Jesus Christ. The message title comes from Matthew chapter 6, verse 30, where we hear, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? In this world we're living it seems to me there is very much a sense of despair regarding the way things are right now. It would appear that we are struggling through our days uh, with a sincere case of what is, going to become, what is going to become of us or what's going to happen tomorrow or uh, when, when is this going to all end? So with these questions of the future, I notice that some of us are beginning to suffer from the worry of having too little. From too little toilet paper, 
to too little money in reserve, to too little money coming in to meet our daily needs, even too little money to meet our retirement needs. You know, this is quite a change from what I was hearing not too long ago before this coronavirus, be, be, before corona. And, and by the way, do you know there's new terminology out here already? We're talking pre-rona and post-rona. So I guess we're in mid-rona. Uh, but just think about pre-rona for a while. Uh, in, in the past, it seems what we were very concerned about, if you remember this, was too little time. It was too little time for what's really important. Too, too little time for family. Too little time for church. Uh, too little time for personal devotions. Too little time for sleep. Too little time even for recreation. And, and, we use, and we use the expression, times have changed. But times have changed no longer speaks of, of former times as though we're talking just post-World War II or even post-9-11. And until we talk about post-Rona, time, we have to remember times have really changed since we moved our clocks ahead on March 7th of 2020. This month has been something else. So today, I'd like to help ease the struggle of the two littles that we have begin, begun speaking of by speaking the much more of the heavenly Father that verse 30 is speaking of. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, will He not much more clothe you? Friends, this is the question that is the answer to the struggle that so many Christians are not dealing with well. Will he, God, not much more you? Will he not much more blank you? And you can fill in the blank. So when we hear these words, will he, what is the answer to this question, will he? Well, the answer to the will he question is, yes, he will. And hallelujah for that. The heavenly Father, as I look at him and I experience him, the heavenly Father has much more me in the past, and he will continue to much more me. So how can I have too little of anything? Even the too little that too much has brought to us in the past. And I know this sounds pretty simple, maybe, maybe even too simple, and yet verse 30 explains why you and I need simple. The simplicity is just what, the simplicity of Jesus is just what we of who he termed as of little faith need. Simply put, if we have received the Holy Spirit, and you have through the atoning work of Christ Jesus on the cross of Calvary, if you believe and accepted Him as your personal Lord and Savior, therefore, having received the Holy Spirit, obeying the Holy Spirit as He has brought us the Word of God, which is the Word of life, life becomes amazingly simple and abundant, according to Jesus. So let me ask, is your life simple, amazingly simple, and amazingly abundant? You know, I believe without a doubt, I would say many people have allowed themselves to be tempted into the sin of being discontented with the life that God has for them by being captivated by the complexities of this world and believing this is just the way it has to be. And I know we don't want to think that this could be, have happened to us in the past, but we have in our, our training our children in the belief that life is to be complicated and that there is much more to life than there maybe really needs to be. In fact, I believe this is so true, I'm, I'm not sure it will ever be reversed because this is what we have become to see as normal. It seems to me that our loving God has provided us with a new normal, 
I've heard that, that term time and time again this week. A new normal, one where a concern for too little might lead us to recognizing the much more of God's love for us. And wouldn't that be grand? But we do need to be careful. For in the recent past, normal meant worldly, the the church and the people of it fitting right in. And and that is why there was neither anything particularly peculiar about us as God's people. And Satan was laughing. Satan was laughing because we didn't even know it was true. The accuser of the brethren that the Bible calls the devil just loves to be mocking us before the throne of our God. Like he's saying, look, look down at them. They're, they're, they're running around like chickens with their heads cut off, e- even though they're cooped up right now, no direction, no, no vision, discontented and confused, thinking they know better than God and possibly thinking God doesn't know any better. And again, I, th- I think most of us would say, well, Pastor Mark, folks, we're just trying to get by. Well, What if I said, no, they weren't? They were trying to get ahead pre-Rona. I think most Christians would confess God cares for us much more than the birds of the air and the grass of the field. But if we would stop and consider, there's the word, consider, we may find ourselves the yuns of little faith Jesus is speaking of in Matthew chapter 6. And excuse me for putting Pittsburghese into Jesus' mouth. But he does speak our language. Friends, we need to consider. According to verse 24, we may have been serving the wrong master, which is to despise and hate the other. You see, there's really no in-between according to these scriptures. So let's look at the birds of the air. And maybe you didn't have time before, but maybe you do have time now. Or, or maybe you think they're, too, they're too, too simple to consider. But if you will, I think you'll find this. The main aim of a bird is to obey the principle of life that is in them, and God looks after them. So I'm going to ask you, spiritual beings that you are, what exactly is the principle of life that you obey? Is it that principle of life which the Holy Ghost put in you through your relationship with Jesus Christ where you are obeying His Spirit without regard to other or any influences other than Him? Look at the flowers of the field. Isn't this a beautiful time of year to do that? Thank you, Jesus. Look at the flowers of the field. They grow where they are put. Many people are refusing to grow where where God has planted them, and so they take root, root nowhere. And so what happens to an unrooted or uprooted plant? They die and disappear. And for a while, there's an empty place where they used to be. Now, as I look out at this sanctuary, (laughs) you know, on a normal Sunday, I'd I'd just say, hey, folks, look at all the empty spots and who should be there. Well, times have changed, haven't they? This seems to be our new normal for a while. But whatever the case might be, Jesus says this. Jesus says that if we are obedient in the life he has given us, he will look after all the other things. And Jesus does not lie. So if we're to experience the much more, or excuse me, if we're not experiencing the much more, it's because we have chosen not to. We are probably taken up with the confusing considerations that that are multiple things to worry about, which God says not to. And and we forget to think about, we forget to give, think about nothing but the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what that means is we believe in this world and, and not that world. Let me ask you, could you honestly say to someone, I live in the realm of King Jesus. I live in his economy, along with the birds 
and with the flowers. And it may be simple, but my, oh, my, is it wonderful and is it abundant. It is the place where Matthew 6.33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And so they have. And I believe this with all my heart. And I hope you do as well. And if you don't, maybe, maybe you haven't considered it long enough. Consider, consider it and consider it until you believe it. We need to consider to simplify our lives, that's for certain, which I believe the Lord has put us in a position to accomplish. So praise his holy name. And to do this, we must decide to do something. We must decide to consecrate ourselves. Consecrate. Now, there's a word you don't use very much, is it? Consecration. Something that birds and flowers need not do. Because consecration is only for those who are, according to verse 26 of Matthew 6, much better than the birds of the air. And according to verse 30, they're much more than the grass of the field. That's you and I. Consecration is for those who can consciously decide of their own free will to separate themselves to one particular thing. So in case you want to write something down today, write this down. Consecration is for those who can consciously decide of their own free will to separate themselves to one particular thing. And that one particular thing, and this is verse 33, is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Continually separating myself to consider God every day of my life and not worry about anything else, not considering anything else of any significance compared to him. Consecration is a continual act of the will that allows Jesus Christ to be the Lord of our life. So let's consecrate ourselves. Look at verse 25. Take no thought for your life. You know, I think of those words, and they're the words of Jesus from the most powerful sermon you'll ever hear. I'd like to take those words and put it on a giant billboard on Route 28 and, and, and say, Jesus says, take no thought for your life, Matthew chapter 6. And then I would love to get into the heads of the people who drive by that billboard and, one, and find out what they're thinking. Take no thought for your life. This is what Jesus says to us. And you know what? Most people would think you insane to believe it were even possible. To make, take no thought for your life. So again, I ask, if someone were to say to you, in, in any sense of the words, friend, why is it that you are not all caught up in the drama and the struggles of life? Why do you not profess to have too little of this or that or the other thing? Why are you so peaceful? Can you imagine? This is what people who take no thought for their life look like. And just think if you were to answer those folks this way. Well, after some consideration, I take no thought for my life what I shall eat, or what I shall drink, or what I shall wear. You see, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I have a Father in heaven that provides all that I need and even much more. Life in his kingdom is grand. In his kingdom, and folks, this is verse 34. Verse 34 of Matthew chapter 6. In his kingdom... I don't even have to think about tomorrow because today is enough for now. Today's enough for now. What would people think if you talked like this? If you lived like this were true? This is what I'd like you to consider as we seek God's kingdom and his righteousness 
above all else. Let us pray. Gracious Father in heaven, I just want to thank you for the Sermon on the Mount, the words of Jesus Christ teaching us, having us look at nature, the birds of the air and the grass of the field. Lord, as we look out on these beautiful spring days we're having, you're sending us the blessing of rain. And Father God, the grass is turning green, the, leaf, the trees are budding and leafing. Uh, Father God, I want to thank you for life in this beautiful earth of yours. Father God, as we go through what we go through, let, let us put our trust in you, Father God, uh, as though there's no thought to anything other than Jesus Christ, our Lord, knowing that everything else is going to take care of itself, including where we should be, what we should be doing, what we should be saying, or what, we're, what, or what we're receiving as our daily bread, and even the clothes we're wearing. Father, help us to be this trusting. I pray in Jesus' glory, glorious and precious name. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ray and Jennifer. I want to thank Jamie Osborne and Claire Osborne. Jan, thank you for that beautiful solo this, this morning, this afternoon, this evening. And I thank Caleb and Grace for being here to take care of us today. As you're hearing what you hear through all the things that are taking place in our world today, and you hear Jesus saying what he said in the Sermon on the Mount regarding seeking the kingdom first and his righteousness, for a person to be able to do that, Jesus Christ needs to be the Lord and Savior of their life. And as we get closer to this Easter holiday, we're getting closer to that Good Friday holiday where we remember the cross of Calvary and Jesus dying there that Friday afternoon. And he died there for the sin of the world. He's died there for your sin. He died there for my sin. Three days later, he arose from the grave. This is the good news. This is gospel. And it is our response to that good news, believing that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God and that he died to save the world from, from, from sin by believing that, that he died for you personally, that he rose again for you personally to give you life free from sin, to give you life abundant, to give you life eternal. For that to be true of you, you must accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and pray asking him into your heart. So I would ask that you do that if you, if you have not. And if you want to talk more about this, I'm here at the church throughout the week. Uh, I'm, at, I'm at home throughout the week. Please call me and we can talk. And, and yes, we can get together and talk if you'd like to do that. So we hope you join us next time, however the case might be. And on this, this afternoon, I want to close with a benediction that's a Franciscan benediction that goes like this. Would you bow your heads? May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with just enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world, so that you can do what others claim cannot be done because we do it in the all-powerful and glorious name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.